What if I told you that you may be carrying something that's in conflict with your calling? What if it's even delaying your destiny or compromising your conversion process? You'd want to know, wouldn't you? Well, that's exactly what we've been talking about this week in this series titled The Sifting Season, this series of devotion and prayer. And um, all this week, we're looking at four areas that, uh, that we find in the Apostle Peter's life, but we can also locate in our own lives where God allowed him to go through a sifting season, through a sifting process, where he separated what was useful from that which is useless. I'm going to say that again. The sifting season allowed for Peter to experience a separation process from that which is useful and that which is useless. And I want you to know uh, that God desires to use you in this season. In the year of 2024, he wants to use you like never before. He does. He wants to get the glory in, out, and through your life. But there may be something that's holding that up. And that's why we're talking about the sifting season. Let's go back to the scripture. We're in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. And I want you to see the conversation that Jesus had with Peter. He says to him, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Yes, so we find that uh, Jesus warns Peter of an event that's about to take place, of a process that he's about to undergo. And this process is called sifting. Well, if you've, you've been with us this week, you know that we know that sifting is a process where wheat is processed, or you remove the seed or the kernel, which is the good part that we use to, of course, make bread. Um, it, it separates it from all of the things that are useless, which is called chaff, which is, of course, the, the part that surrounds the seed, as well as all of the other elements of the stalk of wheat. The sifting is what separates the two. And so just like it happens with the wheat, it's also happening in Peter's life but Peter isn't by himself because the Lord says to him that uh, that Satan desires to sift you as we he desires to sift you. It's not just talking about Simon. He's talking about all of the disciples. And I believe that you're a disciple of Jesus. And that means that you cannot escape. You cannot escape the sifting yourself. So what I can do is I can give you perspective uh, to help you understand what the conflict is or what the challenges is that you may be experiencing, which is a part of the sifting process. Now, here's a one point I want to make uh, this morning before we get into um, our second thing, because there are four areas or four matters that may be that may be delaying your your destiny and, of course, conflicting with your calling. Um, but this is the real point I want to make here. Jesus said, "And when thou art converted." When thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Uh, you have to wonder, what does conversion mean? And there are so many different definitions of conversion, um, being converted from one religion to another. Uh, what exactly does that mean? Well, I tell you that the verse or the word that's used for converted, it means to revert, to revert. And the only way that this seems to make sense to me is that when you're talking about sifting wheat, that wheat has to go through a conversion process. Yeah. When it goes through the conversion process, it reveals the seed, which is now naked from all of the other things that it was covered by and surrounded by before. And I believe that the goal is that you would be converted. That's when all of the chafe or the shaft is removed from your life. Are you ready for it? I think that's exactly what God wants to do. He wants us to be fully converted. He wants us to be naked of all of those, uh, free from all of those things that are useless to him, because he cannot use these things in order to fulfill your destiny. Let's go ahead and look at it. The first of which 
Uh, let's see here. We talked about was pride. That was the number one thing that we talked about yesterday. Today, I want to talk about presumption. Yeah, this is the second thing that can be com in conflict with your calling as well as delaying your destiny and even compromising your conversion process. Yeah, pride and presumption. What exactly does it mean to presume something or to be or to act presumptuously? Well, I tell you in simple that a person acts presumptuously when they act in presumption, they tend to have a, a habit of over overstepping boundaries. When a person acts, uh, acts out of presumption, they have a tendency to overstep boundaries. Uh, these are acts of arrogance. Um, they're actually disguised as confidence. Let's say that again. Whenever a person is overstepping boundaries, uh -huh, uh, these are actually acts of arrogance that are disguised as confidence. I'll give you a scripture that, that gives us a good example of this. Um, this is uh, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. It says, go ahead and make all the plans you want, but it's up to the Lord who will ultimately direct your steps. That's in the Passion Translation. Yeah. Now, it's not to say that we can't make plans, brothers and sisters. That's not what the scripture is saying. What it's saying is that we ultimately know that the Lord is the one who's going to direct us. Now, that's humility. Mm -hmm. However, what if I don't wait for the Lord to direct my steps? What if I just immediately jump out there and do what I thought it was supposed to be? Well, that would be a person who's acting presumptuously. An example of this um, in the life of Peter is when the Lord told him, told all of them, that he was going to be uh, sacrificed, that he was going to be crucified on the cross. Well, Peter says, Lord, that ain't going to happen. Yeah, he rebukes, he rebukes Jesus. And you know what Jesus says to him? He says, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Mm -hmm. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, you care about the things of men and not the things of God. Can you see that? Brothers and sisters, this was something that the Lord had to speak about Simon or Peter and call it out of him, because if he didn't, it was going to be in conflict with his calling, and it was even going to delay his destiny. I want you to know today, brothers and sisters, that God desires to use you like never before in 2024, but you've got to make sure that there's no shafe or shaft on your life. We've got to get rid of what's useless so that all that remains is what's useful to God. I want to give God something he can use, not something where he has to turn himself away from us. And that number one thing is our pride, and the second is our presumption. Let's pray today that we would embrace the sifting season so that God can have something to use and not something he can't. Father, we thank you today and we honor you on this, this worship Wednesday. Father, you're wonderful. You're faithful to us. You've been good. and Your mercy is everlasting. Lord, we ask you today to forgive us. Father, there's something that we did or said that came short of your glory. But Lord, what I love about you is that you're faithful and just, that if we confess our sins, that you will forgive us our sin and purify us of all unrighteousness. So Lord, we won't hold back. Lord, we won't even try to cover it up. But Father, we expose it through our confession. And Father, this morning we wanna tell you thank you today for today. Because God, you didn't have to let us live, but Lord, you did, and we're grateful. I lift up those that are here with me this morning. I lift up our whole community. Because Lord, we are those who desire to be used by you. But Lord, we recognize that conversion is necessary in order to maximize our potential in your purpose. So Father, we embrace the season of sifting so that we would be able to separate ourselves from that which is useful and that which is useless. We want to be used by you. 
And Lord, we don't want presumption to be in the way of your purpose. Father, we humble ourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. Father, we yield ourselves to you. We delight ourselves. We even commit our works to you. And you said that our thoughts would be established. Lord, we won't get ahead of you, but we will allow your spirit to guide us into all truth. As we close out this prayer, we pray as your son taught us. We say, our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. God, yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. So we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle prayer. Hey, there's there's a prayer request that came in um, for a woman by the name of Gail who's dealing with several issues, one of them having to deal with a cancer diagnosis. And there's been a request from her family that we would pray for her. Can you do me a favor and keep Gail in your prayers? Father, we thank you for healing according to the blood of Jesus, according to the stripes of Jesus. And we thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. God bless you. Take 60 seconds to reflect on today's devotional, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care.